Hello, welcome to another video by Jenkins Dota. In this video, I'm going to show you the single most bullshit thing in 7.28. This thing has taken Batrider's win rate from a pretty bad 47% to 58% in pro-level pubs in two days that people are abusing this strategy. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Hopping into the game here, the very first thing that I want to show you is the actual results of this strategy in terms of net worth at the timings that you can hit these ridiculous net worth spikes because I seriously think that this strategy is going to be nerfed in one to two weeks depending literally just on how many vacation days the Valve employees are taking around the Christmas days. So here we can see my net worth. I'm about 6 out of 10. I'm losing the lane. I'm getting dumpstered because I'm really bad. And then look what happens around the 10 minute mark once I start farming up Ancients that I've been stacking. All of a sudden, I am second place in net worth after losing the lane. I got 9 minutes boots of travel and then I got a 12 minute blink dagger in a losing lane. So next, I want to quickly take a look at why exactly it is so damn efficient to farm Ancients on Batrider in 7.28 compared to the previous patches where he could farm Ancients, it just was so much slower that you would be better off hitting lane creeps or other jungle creeps. So the very first most important thing is that Sticky Napalm no longer does less damage to creeps. It used to do half damage to creeps, so that is just... 200% extra creep damage on Batrider, which of course includes Ancients. And then on top of this, if I control F for Ancients, first I'll see a bunch of other bullshit, but then I can see here that Neutral Ancients magic resistance reduced from 70% to 50%. So instead of doing only 30% damage to Ancients, you now do 50%. That is a 1.6 times uh, roughly increase to damage, and with the 200% that Batrider got from his buffs, that means Batrider does more than three times the amount of damage than he did before to Ancient Creeps. That is way too much. Hopping back into the game here, I want to quickly show you how to play the laning stage on Batrider in this patch, because I think if you are a Batrider player from a previous patch, or you are trying to play it like you've seen people play it in previous Dota patches, you're going to have a very bad time. This hero does not play to dominate lanes. He does not play to dumpster. He plays to farm creeps. Even if you aren't stacking ancients, I believe that if this gets nerfed, you still, because of the creep damage, should play to farm creeps. No hero is going to outfarm you, so you should just farm. So in terms of starting items, uh, I go for Sage's Mask, two mangoes usually. I went for the Clarity because we lost gold picking here. Uh, two tangos just so that you have enough regen to survive. And then a Healing Cell for bonus regen in case that you take a bunch of damage. Basically what you want to do is just make sure you have enough regen to get to your bottle and to just spam your Napalm on those creeps to get last hits. So the very first thing that I want to mention from the laning stage that I think is incredibly important is something that I learned from an extremely good Batrider player from watching a bunch of his replays, uh, Monkeys Forever, aka Brian Canavan. He actually has a YouTube channel here on YouTube, so go check it out. But in any case, basically what this guy does is he highly prioritizes getting his sticky napalm on creeps over heroes, and he will only really put it on heroes if he is bodying the creep wave such that he is guaranteed to get the last hits, or if the heroes are standing directly on the creep wave. And the reason for that is because Batrider's Boots of Travel power spike is so damn strong that as long as you're getting last hits and you get to that point, you will eventually apply pressure. So you don't really need to apply pressure before that because you know that it's going to happen eventually if you just play safe and hit creeps. So next, there are a couple of other things that I want to mention with regards to laning on Batrider versus laning on these other offlaners. Uh, number one, you want to allow double waves to come into you because what that means is that you can just sit there using only sticky napalm to farm the creeps, which is great because that it means that your Sage's Mask is going to regen you enough mana such that on maybe the next creep wave, you're going to have enough extra mana to use that Firefly. So it's all about conserving resources and just playing for that Boots of Travel power spike. Uh, the next thing is that you're going to see here in a second, the enemy Witch Doctor pulls because I allowed this double wave to come into me, and I didn't just push it out with Firefly. And this is perfectly okay with you if you're Batrider. 
this hero is exceptional at contesting pulls. If this Morphling comes over here and they're really pressuring me to try to get the last hit on this Centaur, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Firefly. I'm going to kill all of the creeps with my Firefly, and then I'm going to pressure them off with the Firefly as well. So basically all I'm saying is that if a double wave is coming into you, do not try to push it out unless there's like a big stack the enemy team is going to farm or, you know, some weird extraneous circumstance. But just generally, let double waves come into you. Let that be a moment where you're able to conserve your resources. And then when they pull, that's when you can use your Firefly to contest the pull if you have to. But it's all about conserving resources on this hero and applying for that Boots of Travel power spike. So at five minutes in, a very important timing happens where now you can cut the enemy creep wave anywhere instead of directly behind their tier one tower, which means you can begin wave cutting. And this is exactly when I tell my team, uh, particularly my position four, hey, buddy, do not come to lane. I don't need you. Just stack ancients. And then guess what? I'm going to give you a bonus free lane at some point because I'm going to be taking the Ancients and then you can take my lane for free. And that usually baits people into stacking Ancients for you. So once that five minute mark hits, uh, I go pick up the bounties. I try to push the lane in as much as I can. Sometimes I consider fire flying it. But other times like this, you can see, I just ditch it. I, I just let the creep wave go past me. I don't care about this catapult, whatever. I'm going to miss some creeps. And I go on this suicide mission to behind the enemy tower. And I just cut two waves and then farm them both together, which Doctor puts himself a little far out of position. I suicide to kill him because I get, get to go back to base, full resources. I lied. I didn't actually suicide because he just dies to me without running into the tower. That's great. I keep cutting. I know that the Visage might come down here and kill me. And if he does, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the Ancients, stack those one time, and then farm them. I play towards the bottom area. Here's where Pudge hooks me. Like I said, it's a suicide mission. I really don't care about this. I'm getting a ton of farm, and they are wasting their time trying to kill me. So now that they've all TP'd towards that bot area, I wait to respawn. I ping to this guy to please stack the Ancients. And if your teammates aren't going to do this, that's perfectly fine. You can just give your teammates the lane, uh, and then you can stack these Ancients yourself while jungling. I've seen plenty of people do that. It just happened that in this game, I had a team that was, they were pretty cool. I get seven stacks, I run it into this hard camp because, hey, why not get some extra gold? I've even seen in high-rated games, Batriders will have this hard camp stacked as well from some good supports, or maybe Batrider will do it himself. I walk all the way back to base, and all of a sudden, I do two creep cuts, one ancient camp, and I have boots of travel at nine minutes. This is an insane timing. Stack the ancients again, stack the hard camp as well, because I wasn't lazy this time. And then I farm it up. And I want to show you here how quickly I get a Blink Dagger. If I had farmed, if I had stacked a couple more times, I would have already had the Blink Dagger. But I get a 12-minute Blink Dagger. And now, with these items, Batrider is a god. Nobody contests that. Nobody in the right mind thinks that Batrider is bad once he has Blink Boots of Travel. I mean, this is one of the most cancer heroes. There's a reason every single TI it comes back. Because this Flaming Lasso ability to pull an enemy player into your team is just absurdly broken. The question is, can you get to that point without losing? And with this strategy, 100% you can. You will. And you will quickly. So once you have the Boots of Travel blink, uh, I'm going to show you a failed gank in a second here. But what I basically want to show you is just how you should play Batrider, the two kind of phases or, you know, stages of Batrider, and you switch between them as the game progresses, depending on your lasso cooldown. But essentially, every single time you have lasso, you generally want to go for a smoke because usually just that lasso cooldown means that if you jump somebody, you can kill them. Even if you are behind, you can jump somebody and you can kill them because one guy versus however many you smoke with, nobody's going to survive that. So you can see here, that I see that the Visage is farming here, so I jump, I lasso him with that extended lasso range that was buffed in the patch. I'm able to get him, I bring him on the cliff. Uh, in retrospect, I think I should have played near my Lashrac because I just didn't anticipate how much damage reduction the vis Visage had. This is okay, he survived. This is still pressure on the map. This is still, hey, you can't farm here. Your jungle is unsafe. 
you know, I obviously would much rather to kill him, but it's still pressure being applied. Okay, so now we hit the second stage of Batrider. When you don't have lasso, when you don't have resources, you don't want to fight. So what do you do? You go to the dead lane and you play to just kill creep waves and to make space. Beastmaster is playing up here. Anybody else that comes up here is going to die. You can see that he's literally killing my Wraith King here. He turns around, kills Wraith King. And so I just begin kiting. I just begin cutting waves, running to the enemy side, being really annoying. This is literally all about just wasting their time, making space, killing creep waves. Of course, if I can get farm, I want to. I'm just playing to wait for my lasso cooldown to be up. And then once I have that, I'm going to go for another kill. So lasso is almost off cooldown. We smoke up again. It is so simple. Literally the exact same thing happens, except I don't mess up this time, and I hold my lasso until Visage is a little bit lower. I pull him onto the exact same cliff. He's not able to get away. We kill them all. They run into their jungle. They're wasting a ton of resources. This is just good trades all around. We're very happy about this. And now I go back into the second stage of Batrider, where I want to just play to kill creeps, be annoying, force the enemy team to run at me, and farm. Like, the thing with this hero is it's so damn easy to play at the mid-game period because it's not like you have to come up with, what's my item power spike? You know, you're not doing these crazy miracle level calculations. It's literally like, do you have lasso? Okay, go fight. Do you not have lasso? Okay, go farm. That's literally it. And then you just eventually win the game because of good pickoffs. Hello, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed that video by Jenkins Dota. Please subscribe my to...